Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew Robinson, and normally I would tell you that I am a recovering audiophile, except today we're not talking about audio. We're talking about a TV. So if you are new to this channel, yes, we typically talk about things like hi-fi, music, art, and design. And a TV can be designed, and a TV can fall into a modern hi-fi system, but we're going to focus primarily just on its video performance today. Of course, that means we have a unique review, because we are reviewing none other than Hisense's H8G Quantum Dot Television. Let's get into it. So a few months ago, we reviewed Hisense's H8F uh, LED 4K TV, and we were pretty happy with it. In fact, we called it the budget reference to beat. And a lot of you really liked that review. Well, Hisense reached back out to us and asked if we would want to review the new H8G Quantum Dot model for 2020. And of course, we said yes, because I wanted to see if you could improve upon budget perfection. So that is why the H8G is with us today. Now, the H8 8G comes in four variants, a 50, 55, 65, and 75. Hisense sent us the 65 model, and that is the model that you will be seeing in this video. Now, all of these specs are the same across the board, so really the only thing that you have to decide for yourself is which size do you want. And I threw out this disclaimer in the last review, and I feel like I have to throw this out for this one. We are going to be showing you the television in action. That is to say, you will see video throughout this review of the Hisense displaying video in ambient light conditions. But you shouldn't really fully judge a TV based on the compressed image that you are going to see through YouTube. That is to say that while we have to show you the TV and want to show you the TV, much like a sound demo on YouTube, you're not going to get the full picture, if you will. The only thing really different here in terms of specifications between last year's model and the current model 2020 is the presence of Quantum Dot. Now, Quantum Dot has been with Hisense in their 9 series, but this is the first time that we're seeing it in the H8. And Quantum Dot is, is it's kind of a filter or a substrate or just a layer that goes between the LED backlit panel and the LCD. And it's just a way of kind of breaking up the light so that the gradations of light and the gradations of color and therefore contrast become finer. In a weird way, it's a way of tricking LED into acting or appearing to be more like OLED. So if OLED is your reference and OLED's over here and LED is here, Quantum Dot bridges the gap and kind of gives you performance sort of right in the middle. But for the most part, with the exception of the Quantum Dot technology, everything else in the new model, the 2020 model here, is largely the same as last year's model. But is the presence of Quantum Dot enough of an upgrade? Does it make a noticeable or perceivable difference? And that is what we wanted to find out because if it does, then an already great TV in the H8 series from last year becomes even better. But if it doesn't, do you need to upgrade? So that is the question we are hoping to answer in this review. Out of the box, the Hisense H8G ships in its eco mode, and in its eco mode, it's terrible. There's nothing accurate about it. So while it may be saving you a couple of bucks at the meter, it comes at the expense of image quality. And frankly, the dynamic and standard modes aren't any better. What you're going to want to do if you were to purchase this television is put it in its theater day mode straight away. Uh, go ahead and skip theater night because that is also equally bad. It's better than all of the other ones, but theater day is 80 to 90 percent calibrated out of the box. And its biggest strengths are its color accuracy. In theater day mode out of the box, the H8G's color accuracy is near as makes no difference. Perfect. That is to say, any errors are not perceivable by the human eye. Its grayscale is still a little bit off, but thankfully, this TV has the proper CMS controls in order to bring it into compliance. And once you do that with a proper light meter and software like SpectraCal's CalMan, which is what I use, once you do that, you have a reference level display through and through. Same as with the old one, 
but even better this time. Now, Hisense does claim a peak brightness of 700 nits, and I measured that and maybe just a little bit more in several different test scenarios. Um, and that's great. 700 nits is awesome. However, if you want absolute black, that is OLED level blacks, you will have to bring the brightness down a little bit. So if you are one that needs the brightness to overcome, say, a lot of windows or reflections, things like that, you may not achieve truly reference or absolute black from this display. But absolute black is achievable and it comes at just a little bit of brightness. I found that the brightness setting for me was about 75 to 80 out of a maximum of 100 in order to measure absolute black. And with absolute black present, color contrast and white and black contrast, just contrast in general, greatly improves. Another thing that helps this TV tremendously, but you do have to go in and disable it, is all of the active backlighting controls or the dynamic backlighting controls. You're going to want to turn all of those off. You're also going to want to turn all of the motion interpolation stuff completely off. They're terrible. This has some of the worst dynamic backlighting I've ever seen. I had that same complaint with last year's model and frankly, it didn't get any better here. Even with more zones, the dynamic backlighting is absolutely atrocious. But what has improved over the last year's model is the light uniformity, edge to edge, corner to corner, however you wanna phrase it. Light uniformity is much improved. And as a result, off-axis viewing has gotten just a little bit better. I'm not gonna say that off-axis viewing has improved tenfold or is best in class. This still is not fantastic if you are, say, quite off axis, but it is vastly improved over the previous model. Other than that, colors, like I said, are accurate out of the box. That makes for very, very nice skin tones, very good color rendition throughout, regardless of your source material. Detail, texture, and nuance uh, in the picture itself is fantastic. If you disable a lot of the artifact and noise filters that are in the menu, you will see a perceivable increase in detail and texture resolution. I would encourage you not to bump up the sharpness as that does uh, introduce edge artifacts. This thing is plenty sharp on its own. It doesn't need any artificial enhancements. So out of the box, sharpness is set at five. Honestly, leave it there. You don't need to monkey with that too, too much because at 4K, in a native resolution of 4K, this thing is plenty sharp. It has a motion refresh rate of 240 hertz, which if you are a gamer and you put this thing into its game mode should serve you nicely. Unfortunately, I'm not a big gamer, so this is not something that I tested personally. So your mileage may vary or your opinion of this feature may differ from my own. Suffice to say that Hisense is touting the game mode on this particular display thanks to its 240 hertz refresh rate. This new model, like the old model, runs on Android TV. And while Hisense doesn't specify if the new model got a processor upgrade, it does seem to be noticeably snappier in its response to commands. So if you are a fan of Android TV, as I am, I use it exclusively. I do all of my apps and video streaming through the embedded Android TV platform. The fact that it is so responsive now and the menus so much more quick. I love it. I love it. It makes using this thing, especially now that the firmware updates have caught up, it makes using this thing that much more enjoyable. So overall, the presence of quantum dots with the H8G do matter here because gradations of color and gradations of darks to light are more granular, that is to say they are finer. So skin textures, textures in fabrics, things like that, they are more detailed and they are more nuanced, thus making them feel a lot more organic in direct comparison to last year's model. So if you have last year's model and you're thinking about upgrading, the presence of quantum dots is noticeable. If you have not yet purchased a TV, this would be the one to potentially look at and consider straight away, even though last year's model is still technically available for sale at a lower price. So if it's that good, if it is a reference level display post calibration, 
what don't I like about it? Or what is there not to like about it? Well, for starters, yes, with proper calibration and full calibration, you can bring this thing up to reference spec. That being said, the CMS controls inside the menu, while copious, don't always respond the way that I like CMS controls to respond. There's a little bit more trial and error present here than I was anticipating. And I kind of had that gripe with last, with last year's model, and it really hasn't changed much here. Needless to say, kind of once you figure out its little quirks, its idiosyncrasies, it is, you do kind of work around it and you figure out what it needs in terms of inputs in order to be brought into spec. But yeah, it will take a little bit of trial and error or someone that really knows what they're doing in order to wring the absolute most performance from this display. Like I said earlier in this review and with last year's model, the H8G has some of the absolute worst dynamic local dimming I have ever seen. It's not only noticeable, it's distracting. And this is a feature that a lot of people use, a lot of people like in order to get the most light output and contrast out of their panels in order to watch HDR type, you know, HDR and even non HDR content. Unfortunately, you just can't rely on it with the Hisense H8G. It's terrible. You're going to want to turn all of that off for maximum performance and frankly, brightness. Earlier in this review, I talked about how the menus and the Android TV interface on a whole is snappier or more responsive. If you use ARC or the audio return channel coming out of HDMI, that snappiness does diminish just a little. And when you're using the ARC equipped HDMI input to power or communicate with other electronics, for instance, our Marantz NR1509 AV receiver, remote command controls do lag a little bit when using ARC. If you don't use ARC, you don't rely on that for anything, you think ARC is the devil, you will not notice this. But if you like it, I love ARC, and if you use it and like it, you can expect a 5 to 10% decrease in speed when it comes to remote commands. Another thing about the H8G, and this is, this is a carryover from last year's model as well, the internal memory is only four gigs, and for whatever reason, that fills up quickly. So just because you have the Google Play Store and a wealth of apps at your disposal, if you start loading this thing up with app after app after app, you will fill up the internal memory and slow it down considerably. And if you don't routinely kind of go in and clear the cache, you will find that a lot of apps store a lot of data in the background, which will also cause the TV to slow down. So you either need to make it a habit to clear the cache fairly regularly, I do it every other week or so, or limit the amount of apps that you have installed in your favorites or home screen in order to keep the responsiveness of this display as quick as possible. Other than that, other than those minor gripes, and they really are minor gripes because a lot of them can be overcome simply by going into the menus and defeating things that are just automatically on. So it's not like you have to really do anything that special or employ special tools in order to get the most out of this TV. You just kind of have to go in and defeat all of the default settings, set it to theater day, and then just turn everything else off. And once you do that, this TV is remarkable. Whether you watch standard definition, high definition, 4K or HDR in Dolby Vision or HDR 10 content, it's amazing. The H8G really is a reference level display and once again becomes, the new model becomes my budget reference display that all others will therefore be compared against. So like I said, if you are on the fence about buying last year's model and saving a few dollars and buying this year's model, I would encourage you to go ahead and get this model. So how does this TV compare to other Quantum Dot models on the market today? Very well. It's not as bright as some, for example, uh, Vizio's P-Series Quantum. The Hisense is not as bright as that, but to be honest, the P-Series Quantum, in my opinion and in my experience, because I've reviewed it, needs to be turned down quite a bit in order for it to be enjoyable in everyday situations. The brightness does come in handy when watching HDR content, but for either non-HDR content 
or in darkly lit rooms, that brightness becomes very overpowering very quickly. That is not something that happens with the high sense here. So if you are someone that wants the brightest picture possible, you're probably going to want to skip the H8G and go for something like the Vizio or Samsung's top of the line uh, quantum dot LEDs. But within its market segment, within its price range, the high sense is very, very competitive. In fact, it is very close to matching the performance of Sony's 900 or 950 G series, and it is on par with LG's NanoCell LED TVs. And they're all relatively close in price. LG and Sony are going to command just a little bit more money at the register, which makes the Hisense a bit of a bargain or value, however you want to look at it. Just know that in its theater day mode with all of the presets disabled, the performance of the H8G is remarkable and on par with some of the best in the industry. So that's it. That is my review of Hisense H8G Quantum Dot 4K HDR TV. What did you guys think? Did you like this review? Do you like this TV? Do you own last year's model based on my review? Or are you looking to get into a brand new 4K TV in 2020? Let me know, sound off in the comments below. And of course, if you liked this video, you liked this review, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And oh, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that's it. That's all we have today for you. Hope you guys have a great Friday and a great rest of your week or weekend. I know all the days sort of just kind of blend together now. So are there such a thing as weekends anymore? But I hope you enjoy yours. So I'm going to get out of here. Remember, the only person that has to like the sound or sight of your system is you. So happy listening, happy viewing. Everyone take care and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. I did it for you. None other. None other, man. None other. None other. There, there can only be one. There is only one. Particles or light rays for... I don't know. Compared to other quantum dot models on the market today. In a word, very well. That's two words. The specs from the H8... F to the HHG. God, try saying that three times fast. So the spec, so the specification differences between the H8F, H8, was it the H8? Does it really matter? So how does this, so how does this TV? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. That was like a, here's a cut point. All right. Like a puppet string. It's like that John Krasinski lip sync battle when he did Bye Bye Bye. Oh, right. Remember that? Yeah. Like, nee, nee, nee. Backstreet Boys. In sync. Oh. Get it right. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> I wasn't really listening to boy bands. Mm. All right. <laughs> that was good. Was it? You want me to do it again? No, I don't. You I don't? thought it was. I, I, I mean. It was solid? Yeah, what more can you say? I don't.